state. Force must be used, and the revolution of the proletariat against Persia must go on forever. Leon? And forever and forever. Leon, I was just reading the encyclopedia. Is it the Britannica? Listen to this. No. The universe is viewed by the victors. On August 20th, 1940, a Spanish communist named Ramon Mercador matched a mountain climber's axe into Trotsky's skull in Coyoacan, a suburb of Mexico City. Trotsky died the next day. Yes, and? And I think that there's a mountain climber's axe in your own skull right now. Well, I knew that. When I was shaving this morning, I saw it <coughs> was sticking out the back of my head. At first, I thought it was an ice pick, so I was worried. No, it's not a pick. Don't even say the word. You know my recurring nightmare? Yes, dear. About the ice pick that buries itself in my skull? Yes, dear. That is why I forbid any of the servants from bringing ice picks into this home. Yeah. No one may be seen with an ice pick in this house. Especially not a Spanish communist. But we are. Or we'll do without us. We'll drink our liquor neat and our Coca-Cola warm. Who cares if this is Cayo Khan in August? Cayo Khan in August? Not a bad song title. Or we'll have ice, but we just won't pick or chip at it. Ice will be allowed into the house in blocks, but may not be picked or chipped at under any circumstance. <laughs> or we'll use ice cube trays, if they've been invented yet. And <coughs> that this article doesn't say anything about an ice cube tray bearing itself in my skull, does it? No. Does it? No. Ha! I outsmarted destiny. Which is only a capitalist explanation for the status quo. Leon. Also, look at this. Do you know what this is? No. It's a skull. Yes, I need that. But... <laughs> I want this skull. I own this skull. So what does that make this? Trotsky skull. Yes. <laughs> so if some Spanish communist losing as a gardener wants to come and bury something in it, be it a, well, you know what, or anything else, they'll come here, recognize this as Trotsky skull, bury something in it, and he'll go his way, and I'll go mine. Isn't that ingenious? To a point. Fifty more years of Trotsky. I have some very good news <coughs> for you, Leon. <coughs> Mountain climber sacks. Well, that's ingenious. <laughs> I always thought it was an ice pick. A mountain climber's axe. A mountain climber's axe. Can't I get that through your skull? <laughs> this is very bad news. This is serious. What is serious, Leon? I have a mountain climber's axe buried in my skull. <laughs> Mashed, actually. It says Murphy Dorn mashed the mountain climber's axe into your skull, not buried. Right. What am I going to do? Well... Maybe a hat would cover the handle. You know, one of those cute little alpine hats with, with a point and a feather. <laughs> right. Come on! You better get it! 
But Roma, did you bury your mouth in this axe in my skull? I did not bury it in your skull. <laughs> I smashed it into your skull. <laughs> Excuse me? You see? You can still see that handle. It's truly on the axe, not entirely that tight. Therefore, we can only bury. We can only say smash, or perhaps jump. <laughs> but why did you do this? I think I read about it in an encyclopedia. <laughs> I wanted to use an ice pick, but there weren't any in the house. <laughs> did you realize what you did? Do you know who I am? I'm a major historical figure. I helped won the Russian Revolution. I fought Stalin. I was a major political theorist. What did you do? Was it political disaffection? Anti-counter-revolutionary backlash? Actually, you were love. It's true, Leon. I'm only sorry you had to find out. <laughs> no. Yes. No. See. What a fool I've been. Why did you really do this, Ramon? You will never know, Senor Trotsky. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Luckily for you, your night will soon be over. <laughs> Thank you, Ramon. You may go. Gracias, Senor Trotsky. Uh, oh, one more thing. Yes, Ramon? Do you think you have a chance to look at the tulips? They are quite beautiful today. <laughs> I don't think so, Ramon, but I'll try. Okay, well. <laughs> Uh, hasta la vista, señor Brodsky. Or should I say, buenas noches. <laughs> well, that was it then. The 21st of August, 1940. And the day I'm going to die. And to think that I've gone over so many 21st of August in my life. Like a man walking over his own grave. It's been wonderful being married to you, Leon. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Trotsky. Oh, it has been a burden at times being married to a major historical figure. Well, I'm sorry I was away from home so often expecting the revolution. I understand. And I'm sorry I was never truly in touch with my feelings. No, please. And that I could never really <laughs> communicate. Well, I, I haven't been everything I should have been. No. It's a little late for regrets, but the mountain climbers act is buried in one skull. Smashed, actually. So it wasn't old age, or cancer, or even the next pick that I feared for years. No, it was a mountain climber's axe wielded by a Spanish communist posing as a gardener. You really couldn't have guessed that, Leon. So even an assassin can make the flowers grow. The gardener was false, and yet the garden intended was real. How was I to know he was my killer when I passed him every morning? How was I to know that the man tending the tulips would keep me from seeing what the weather was like tomorrow? How was I to know I'd never see the movie Casablanca, <laughs> which wouldn't be made until 1942, and which I probably wouldn't have liked anyway? <laughs> How was I to know I'd never get to know about the bomb, or the 80,000 men of Hiroshima, or rock and roll, or Gorbachev, or the state of Israel? How was I to know that I'd be completely erased from the history books of my own land? But reinstated, at least partially, someday. Someday. Someday for everyone, there's a room you go into. And it's the room you never leave. Or else, there's the room that you go out of. And it's the last room you ever leave. This, this is my last room. But you aren't even here, Leon. This desk? The skull, that calendar? But you're not even here, my love. The sunshine coming through the blinds. That was yesterday. You're in a hospital, unconscious. The flowers in the garden, you sitting here. This is yesterday, you're saying. Would you mind reading the passage one more time? On August 20th. It gives you a little hope about the world, doesn't it? The man can have a mountain climber's axe smashed in his skull. Yet live on for one whole day. <laughs> I think I'll go take a look at the two.